Um, I'm working on a, a process called ultra-peripheral collision. It's when the two nuclei that we collide at the LHC pass near each other, but, not, but they don't overlap. And then the electromagnetic fields around these um, nuclei actually interact with each other and produces um, muon pairs, mu plus and mu, mu minus pairs, out of light by light scattering. So when, the, when two light particles strike each other and then produce two particles um, out of nothing, essentially. Uh, this is a very useful process because it relates to other measurements that we're making. Um, in, um, for instance, we measured light by light scattering, which is something which had been expected for decades and had never been seen before. It also helps us um, understand what the um, initial flux of photons should be that, would, that we, we can use for studying when one of those photons strikes the other nucleus and actually produces jets off of that nucleus, something called photonuclear uh, or, photo, or jet photoproduction which um, is some way we can study um, the structure of nuclei um, at, at, at the LHC. And it's a nice measurement to be doing because we're very excited about the possibility of doing similar physics at the Electron Ion Collider, which we hope to build in the United States in the coming years. Uh, the ALICE collaboration produced um, a lot of interesting new results for Quark Matter 2018. Um, among them are several results regarding xenon-xenon um, collisions, which we're very excited about. Xenon-xenon um, work Xenon was collided with Xenon um, for only a few hours la in October of last year and we produced results both on the collective flow of the matter produced when the Xenon nuclei collide with each other so we get to look at the, deep, the differences of the shapes of the overlapping nu Xenon um, nuclei as compared to lead and it's a way that we can study in detail um, the way that this hot dense matter that we produce at the LHC changes when you're changing the shape of the, of the overlap. Uh, we also um, we also wanted to study what happens to jets when they are produced in xenon xenon collisions, and we produced um, both results on the the what we call the suppression or the reduction in the number of particles that are produced with high momentum because of what, what, because of the energy loss of jets going through this hot dense uh, matter, and we also studied um, we made. We looked at events where there are two jets, one in one direction, one in the other direction, and want to look at the differences in their energy to try to see if we can see any differences between, between the, um, the sizes of a xenon-xenon collision and a lead-lead collision. And, and, and the results are very interesting, and we're very excited to hear what people have to say about them. We also made an interesting measurement of, of these, these muon pairs that are produced when photons hit other photons. We also made a measurement of those when the two nuclei are overlapping each other, and, and, and we were, we've interpreted our data in such a way that we, we think that it's possible that one of the muons may actually be influenced by the hot dense matter formed when, when in the collision of the lead ions. And so this is a, a, potentially a new tool to study, um, the, study the, the, the density and the, the, the makeup of the hot dense matter by using muons interacting electromagnetically instead of quarks and gluons interacting strongly, which is what we've usually done until now. Uh, at this conference, I've, it's been very exciting to see um, both what the other experiments have shown and also to see here lots of new theoretical ideas um, in this conference. I was particularly excited to see the xenon-xenon results, again, because it was so little data and yet, yet, yet it's clear from the, um, from the results we brought and from the results from ALICE and from CMS that there's lots of exciting things that we can do with it and a lot of different measurements and that they all provide insight into, um, into heavy ion collisions and what we understand about the geometry. I've also been, it's also very exciting to see people get more and more sophisticated analyses um, on, on the lead-lead data, um, in particular the, the more sophisticated analyses on jets and on heavy flavor, many, many things, almost too many to think about.